This is a neon screwdriver and it scares the hell out of me, which is why I've affectionately named it the Neon Demon. <coughs> Sorry about that. But why is this so-called electrical tester so demonized? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how it works, why people are so scared of it, and then show you some alternatives to stop you from being processed. I don't know, I haven't seen a demon. I don't know what it sounds like. Right, are you legend? A little while ago, I made a video on non-contact voltage testers and may have suggested that they were the deadliest tester. But many of my subscribers were quick to let me know that the neon screwdriver was definitely the most dangerous. Offering little protection in the event of a failure, it's kind of like using the default internet security on your computer. Which is where Aura can help, the sponsor of this video. Aura is like having an arsenal of different electrical testers at your fingertips, except for your identity. You would never just open a switchboard and start poking around. You're likely to get an electric shock or even get completely electrocuted. And the same goes for the internet. You never know when the next website that you land on could infiltrate your online accounts, finances, or devices. Aura monitors your online activity and alerts you about fraud and thefts super fast. Like if one of your passwords is compromised and someone tries to open up a bank account in your name, you'll get notified right away. Aura will also protect your online devices from malware and encrypt your Wi-Fi connection so you can shop safely for all your electrical equipment online. Also, all plans come with a $1 million identity theft insurance. This is to help you recover your stolen funds, and there's an experienced US-based customer support team that's got your back. So if you want to secure your presence from hackers, scammers, and noisy advertising companies, go to aura.com forward slash think list for your free 14-day trial. This is the tester in question, and it is a wee cowboy! Anyway. I picked this up from my local hardware store, and I have to say, I kind of expected this from China, but Germany? <laughs> I'm kidding. Sort of. I mean, it does have the VDE mark on there, which is given to equipment that exceeds or meets a certain standard, for which I have no idea what the standard is, but it's there nevertheless. Also, just as a side note, is it just me or are tools getting crappier? I mean, who would buy this kind of stuff? Anyways. All right, let's open up this bad boy. Ta-da! So I've released the demon and I can honestly say that the build quality on this is pretty good. I've received some of these over the years in packs of screwdrivers and they have been rubbish. So let's put it to the test. Get it? Test. Now, because I'm in Australia, we have arguably the best socket outlets. I don't care what the UK say. This cannot be sticked directly into the active conductor. So I have created this bastardized thing. Okay, so I've got active, earth, and neutral, and the way it works is you kind of just prod the conductor. I mean, you actually have to touch it. And I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I don't really know why I'm scared, but anyway, let's give it a go. So the idea is that you touch that conductor like that, and then you, t and it's lighting up. It works, and I'm not dead, yet. So if this thing really does work, why are people so frightened of it? Well, let's break it down into its components to see exactly how it works. Magical transition, and here it is. Anyway, these things are super simple. You've got the body which houses the components that has this metallic screwdriver that runs up into the center, then it touches what looks like a one mega ohm resistor in series with a neon bulb, which hits this spring, which is kept on by this end cap, and then you touch it. And the way it works is probably better explained on the computer. Okay, so here we have the active circuit. Let me just break this down real quick. So over on the left, we've got the AC supply, 220 volts at 50 Hertz, the way it was meant to be. Sorry for those in the US. And then we have the one mega ohm resistor. So now we are inside of our tester. So that would be touching our active. And then we can move over here to the neon bulb. Now I've actually used a spark gap. Now the reason I can substitute a spark gap instead of a neon is because they've essentially got the same components. I mean, the spark gaps gas is essentially oxygen and nitrogen when the neon is kind of neon. 
So you can see here the main component that I'm after is actually the breakdown voltage. And it is kind of well known that a neon's breakdown voltage is anywhere from 65 to 90 volts. So that's what I put in there. Then we move on to the capacitor. And the capacitor is you or me or anybody using the tester because we have a capacitance within our body. Now, the best I can find is that it is around or consistently around 200 picofarad. So that's what I've chosen. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is this 1K resistor completing the circuit? Well, that is essentially representing ground and it will vary a lot depending on where you are, where you're standing, what you're touching. So just take that with a grain of salt. So let's run this simulation and see what it looks like. So this is super cool. So you can see that at the peak of the sine wave, it's able to overcome that breakdown voltage in the neon and essentially light up. So when you're looking at the light on, it's not really on all the time. It's actually just flickering like a lot of other lights do. Now, you can also note here the current. We're getting 0 0.008 milliamps, which is nothing. A lot of standards around the world actually mention 30 milliamps as a maximum amount that we should be having. So the circuit itself kind of seems pretty safe. And at this stage, you might be asking, like, why wouldn't I use one of these? It's a low price point and it kind of prevents me from getting electrocuted. Well, let's look at its construction. Now, the main issue that I have with this thing is that you have to actively touch the metal part of that screwdriver with a live part of the circuit. And let's just say that your test has been left in a not so desirable location. Maybe it's got some moisture in it. It could bypass the whole circuit and essentially give you an electric shock. Now, another reason for not using one of these is false positives. Essentially, you could have the neon bulb break, the spring could become corroded, creating a super high resistance, and it won't work when you're touching onto a live component. So now you're like, sure Dave, you convinced me. I'm never gonna use this thing again. I'm just gonna use a non-contact voltage sensor. Well, actually, you might not be safe with that one either. And I explain exactly why in this video here. I found several documented instances where unfortunately apprentices have used a volt stick as their single source and as a result have suffered an electric shock. And then another one that's always on is the Prologue. And if it does that, throw it out. 